Hi there and welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. I'm Luke and here I am with a very festive M5 Stack video. It's not quite Christmas yet, but I'm sure a lot of you have already been putting in preparation for the big day. One of the key things to get you in that festive mood is definitely getting some Christmas lights set up. In this video, we'll be showing you five different lighting setups to add to your Christmas decorations. The lights we'll be using are sometimes referred to as NeoPixel, but were originally known as WS2812, the WS standing for World Series, the company that manufactures them. On Amazon and other e-commerce platforms, you can easily find these LEDs in various different packages. There's even an SK6812 which is also compatible. M5 Stack official store offers these LED strips in varying lengths with a pre-attached Grove port. But it's possible to use any of these WS2812 or SK6812 strips you have lying around by removing the original connector by desoldering it and then soldering one of these Grove wires on. Simply take a Grove cable cut it in half and strip the wires down. The black wire of the Grove port goes to ground or the minus symbol. The red wire should be soldered to the plus 5 volt pin. And finally the yellow cable should be soldered to DI or DIN which stands for data in. Usually there should be an arrow on the cable showing which is the correct direction. If your middle pin says DO you have it the wrong way around. The white cable isn't used so we can just tape that up with some electrical tape or remove it completely to avoid the wire shorting against any of the contacts. Now we've soldered everything together, plug it into the port A and let's get coding. Let's start by adding the RGB LED from the unit section. Make sure port A is selected and enter the amount of LEDs you'll be using. I have 150 in my strip. Let's start with our first LED animation, which I like to call the sparkle. First we'll add a loop to repeat our code. Then create variable for the position of the LEDs. We'll set that position variable to zero initially. Next we'll add a repeat loop and set the amount of repeats to 75. In this code we alternate between the odd and even LEDs on the strip, so only half of the LEDs, 75, will be on at a given time. Next we'll go into the RGB LED panel in Units and choose the NeoPixel Index and RGB Value block. We'll place the POS variable into the Index slot of the block. Next we need to increase the value of the POS variable by 1 each loop. Once this repeat block is run, it will have lit up all of the even numbers. Now we clear all of the LEDs by using a NeoPixel set all to black block. Then we set the POS variable to 1. Next we'll duplicate the repeat block in its contents and place it below. And then finally, a set NeoPixel all to black to clear the LEDs. Since we may want to cycle through a bunch of different functions on our Christmas tree, we might want to add it to a function. If you're unfamiliar with functions, basically there are chunks of code that we can recycle at any time during our program by calling their name. Now on to effect number two. I like to call this one glow. Here we're basically adjusting the brightness level of the LEDs. Firstly, we get a set NeoPixel all block and set it to black to turn off any LEDs that are still left on. We'll use a repeat block again, but this time only set it to 10 times, so we have 10 different levels of brightness. Next we need to create a variable called brightness, which will control the brightness level of the LEDs. Set its initial value to 1. Then we'll add a NeoPixel set all RGB color block, choosing your preferred color. Finally, we'll add a set NeoPixel brightness level and add the brightness variable into the slot on this block. Next, we'll create the code for incrementing the brightness level. 
we use the variable set brightness to and then the maths plus block and then add one to the brightness level for each loop. Then we'll add a slight delay so it's easier to notice the change. Finally we'll duplicate this whole chunk of code only changing the plus to minus so that the LED brightness variable diminishes and so does the brightness of the LEDs. Again I'll create a function for this animation and place the code inside. Next up we have a chasing LED effect or count up count down effect. For this we'll need a count block from the loop section. This creates a variable called i and uses it to iterate through the range that we set. I'm setting it 0 to 150 for the amount of my LEDs. And then the increment we set to 1. Then we make sure that the value of i is set to 0 on startup. Next we'll drag in a near pixel set index to RGB block and we'll be using our i variable to cycle through the LEDs. Next all we need to do is to add a delay. You can experiment setting this at different times depending on how fast or how slow you want your LEDs to count up and count down. Next we place everything inside an if else condition. The condition we use is if i is less than the total number of LEDs, then count from 0 to the total number of LEDs, and when that's reached, count down from the total number to 0. Create another function for this animation, and we'll move on to the next. In the next animation that we'll program, we take each section of the tree and light them up one by one. Again, start by clearing any LEDs that are still switched on. Then we add a delay before the first section gets turned on. To turn a bunch of LEDs on in a sequence, we can use these NeoPixel from number to number blocks. And then we just duplicate a bunch of these, adding delays in between, and experiment with the ranges of numbers. These are what worked for my tree, but you might have something else in mind. Make sure to create another function to hold this, and then we'll move on to the last animation. This last animation effect is a rainbow effect, which cycles through random colors for each cycle. It's pretty straightforward. All we need is the NeoPixel block that allows us to put in individual RGB values. Again we set the range of our LEDs, but this time for the color we're going to be using the random integer from to block from the math section. The RGB value inputs expect numbers in a range from 0 to 255. So we'll adjust our random integer block accordingly and drop it into each of the RGB slots. This block can start to get quite long. So we can just switch it to external inputs so it's easy to see everything on the screen. Duplicate the random integer block and place it in the final two positions. Then we can add a delay to see how fast we want the colors to change. Again let's create a function for this final animation and then we can place all of our function calls into the loop. We can add in delays in between each of the sequences depending on our preference. If you want to, you could always use the Christmas graphic from our last year's Christmas video. You can go to the GitHub where all of these code examples will be posted and find it there. We just need to switch over to the Python section and copy and paste it in here. And here's the result. Doesn't it look festive? I hope you have fun making these Christmas lights. Please leave us a comment if you get stuck, remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!